I'll skip that. <laughs> Go on, Kyle, what are you saying? Welcome to Who Would Watch This, the podcast where we watch a film, chat about the film, and try and figure out who would watch this. Today we're talking about Too Fast, Too Furious, which currently has a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 2.8 on Letterboxd, and a 5.9 on IMDb. Oscar, what's the plot? Oh, bang on right there. Look at that, smashing the IMDb thing. Former cop Brian O'Connor is called upon to bust a dangerous criminal, dangerous criminal, and he recruits the help of a former childhood friend and street racer who has a chance to redeem himself. Bang. Done. Okay. Where's Vin? He's gone. Are you eating in the studio? What are you eating? I'm having a Skittle. You're having a Skittle? Are we sponsored by Skittle? It's Friday night and I need a sugar hit. <laughs> I'm depressed. <laughs> Imagine Friday night, bag of Skittles. It's going to be a good night. Oh my God. Not going to talk to any of my loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> when I tell people I'm doing a podcast on Friday night, they go, ew. Yeah, at work. You're like, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, I'm going to go to bed at 8 p.m. I think that's more cool than doing this. I told my parents I was coming over to do the podcast and they're getting me a mental health specialist. <laughs> <laughs> so I might be not on it anymore because I'll be too well to function. Mum and dad said I couldn't podcast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, no, but it is making you very unhinged as a person. <laughs> um, Oscar, Too Fast, Too Furious. Usually we would go back in time to see what our original selves thought of this film, but instead... We're going to start a little game. We're, we're going, going to start be... a little game, exactly. We're going to, well, The plan is to do all the Fast and Furious. All 11. I'm keen for the fifth one, because I feel like those, they, they suddenly get good. But at the moment, they're in a quest, quite a pit. So what the plan is... We they want... might stay in a pit. Who knows what your opinion might yeah. be. You're going to be like, oh, it's all pit. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I'm shallow. <laughs> um, we've got... Uh, we're going to put it on the clock. We're going to do, try and sum up the movies so far. Uh, in five minutes first one should be easy okay i mean it, we have it a... ideally should be easy i've forgotten it i, am, last I am forgetting it quite quickly all right okay we... hang on. and shall we and here is the sound of the bell okay vin diesel is part of an evil street crew we don't the... know that yet we don't know that yet oh, shit fuck we're moving out of time <laughs> paul walker is an undercover cia we cop. don't know, we that, don't that, know yet. that yet shit <laughs> Okay, Paul Walker's the hottest dude on the fucking film. We know that now. We know that now. We know, we know that, that now. now. He's street racing. He's a cool dude. He gets into a race with some Vin Diesel and he some friends. He uses NOS. He uses NOS. Vin, uh, Paul Walker loses his car, but he saves Vin Diesel from the cops. They become friends. They become pals. Uh, Paul Walker then is revealed to be an undercover cop. We know this now. We know this now. Cappuccinos iced, Four. decaffeinated. Ridiculous. Vin Diesel starts to distrust him, but he also still kind of trusts him. They're still friends. Then Paul Walker pretty much kind of fucks up his undercover cop because he tries to fuck Vin Diesel's uh, sister. Correct. I can't remember her name. Can't forget her name. Skipping it. We've got nine of these films. Hopefully we'll get it. Vin Diesel has sex with somebody named Letty. Yes, Letty. Forget her name's Letty. When he yeah. screams out Letty, I... It was silly. Anyway, <laughs> now the whole thing that Paul Walker's trying to undercover cop is they're stealing some DVD players. Now, they go to a thing called Race uh, race Wars. Bad Oof, name. Bad name. It's the 2000s. Things were different back then. It turns out, in the it transcribes that uh, Vin Diesel finds out that Paul Walker is an undercover cop. He's not happy. He's not happy. But he goes, you know what? We were pals, though, for quite a few days. So I'm going to be fine with you. Oh, that, and then there's other villains. There's other villains. There's a, a, a bunch of other gangs. I don't yeah. know if they're going to be included or come back so far. Anyway, they defeat them. They defeat them. And then Paul Walker's like, have a free car. Have a free car. You're going to drive for 400 meters. We're not using quarter miles. We're not American. We're using Australian language. And it upsets me dearly. It upsets me dearly. It's 400 meters. Ridiculous. Bang. Done. Okay, Carl. Now we're back on a two fast and furious. How do we start? We start with Paul Walker. Oh, I'm going to be tedious. You be tedious. I'll be tedious. The Universal logo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fuck the film. Hit me. We Hit. could do an hour <laughs> on the choice of what they did to the Universal logo in this film. I made a T, so you're going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting here for the <laughs> Universal logo. Because I skipped it. It seems pretty egregious. Are what you happened? kidding me? What happened? What want, I will show you because it's disgusting. Uh, okay, I think do. you have to. Okay, hang on.
Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> My boy, what are they doing to him? <laughs> it's still going. And then it doesn't even blend into the shot of the car. <laughs> what? What a waste. <laughs> what a giant waste. Why didn't they put Universal on the tire? They were like, for look, it's such it a long time. <laughs> they held Universal on it for so... How long was that segment? I think two minutes. <laughs> for the Universal logo? What a, what a waste. Other than that, no notes. High recommend for two fast, two furious. <laughs> okay, we're back. Now, Paul Walker is back in the game. We've got some lovable friends, and funnily enough, thank God they're all (laughs) colour-coordinated. It looks like (laughs) Scooby-Doo. Like the early James Gunn Scooby-Doo. Paul Walker walks in a white shirt and a skivvy. (laughs) A crochet neck. He's like, radio boys, let's do it. Fred on Fred. They all look like their cars. It's kind of hilarious. It is fun, isn't it? Um, It's like, dress for the car you want, not the car you have. Yeah, because we've got another street race. We start with it. Um, We meet Ludacris. Yes, Ludacris is now in the film, right? Yep. First time he's in it, beautiful afro. Yeah. All he does is start the races. It's crazy. He's going to become the computer hacker of the franchise. Oh my God. I can't <laughs> believe it. Like he, like his skills in this film are just setting up various races. Doesn't matter what vehicle it is, boat, car, plane. He's like, I will set up a race and have a weird party next to it. That's my skill. I don't think I could develop that into anything else. Oh, when you find out this movie's going to have a lot to do with boats. Man, <laughs> that was exciting. And anyway, we also meet Eva Mendes in this opening scene. Yes. Who knew she was in this franchise? I'd forgotten. I did. She don't. I guess she doesn't make a rope to return. She does, and I'm excited for you to see how and when she returns. Oh, fantastic! Here's the thing: this is a franchise that never forgets, except it does forget most about this film. <laughs> <laughs> Just, but they remember Eva. <laughs> Eva. We've also got Devon Aoki, who's the uh, pink girl. That's Steve Aoki's sister. Who's Steve Aoki? He's a, a musician. Oh, what like, has he done? Uh, I think he did the Project X soundtrack and became quite big off that. What's the Project X soundtrack? Like he did a bunch of the remix. I feel like the, I feel like we're aging ourselves. He's just a cool musician, I think. <laughs> yes, I remember when. I saw Project X on DVD <laughs> last year. You the, I'm the, young. Got the Criterion Collection on <laughs> Project X. Came in a three pack with Argo and the Mummy Returns. <laughs> Criterion were already scraping the barrel there. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm confused. So essentially, they're still drag racing. Isn't Paul a cop? Who knows? Who knows? I don't. No. It's going to take a long time before we get context. Yeah. So they start racing. Yeah. This is a silly race. It is a silly race. I will say immediately I was like, hells yeah, we're back in the very early 2000s. And they were like, oh, we just found out about CGI. Is it oh. good yet? No, it looks like a crazy frog video. Oh, it looks terrible. It got to a point in the film where they're like, we're going to jump the bridge. Yeah. Like, sorry, in, in this opening sequence, they're like, we're going to jump the bridge. And the friend I was watching it with was just like, if it's not practical again, they're cowards. <laughs> CGI all the way for it's, them to jump that bridge. You know how people go like, oh, the reason why Jurassic Park is such a miracle is because it's a mixture of CGI and practical effects. For some reason, they're like, all right, 50-50. Sometimes <laughs> the practical effects are like, wow, you really like like made four cars drift in a scene. And then they're like next to each other. Like we did that by CGI. <laughs> Somebody came in and illustrated the background and then we did nothing to it. <laughs> 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 no experience. They just had some cars and Hot Wheels driving by by side. We just got somebody into tie dye, just a sheet, and then we put that there. That's what it looks like. It just looks like marble. <laughs> Paul Walker's waving it, kind of. Yeah, oh, give I was excited shimmy. when they were just like, "Guess what? Nos still looks like time travel." <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, we're back into it. It is a strange. It does feel like a superpower, the Nos. I don't. Again, I think we should get through this whole series without looking up what Nos does. Surely. It doesn't do this. No. But, oh, I hope it does. It's pretty crazy when Nos gets turned into, like, a Vision-like character. Yeah. And is brought to life. Woods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's Nos. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Vin and Nos just <laughs> snogging in a room. Oh, they flat out just rip off Marvel. All you can say is, I am Nos. <laughs> Um, I really like in this action sequence, um, in this opening race when they dr- like they're just crashing into advertisement. Mm. Someone just crashes into the Pepsi logo. Yeah, and you're just like, 
Oh. I was parched. I was pretty parched. This was me. I need a drink. I need some sort of Coca Cola beverage. And then somebody crashed into like a KFC sign, <laughs> and I was like, and some fried chicken as well. <laughs> somebody crashed into a tampon sign, and I was like, give me a pack of them. Oh. It was just I just created a shopping list in the first ten minutes of the film. I was like, they're crashing into some great ideas. Amazon was like, you watching Too Fast Too Furious? We've already added it to your cart. <laughs> like, You've already paid for it. It's outside now. We brought yeah. it to you by drone, and yeah. I was like, fair. Thank you. Thank Don't you. Don't mind it. Now, do we think Ludacris is a near murderer because he raises this bridge <laughs> maybe 10 meters? How do they do it? Does nobody else use that bridge? It's I don't know. It's Miami. The, it's busy. <laughs> the film starts with like two people going to a very quiet street putting road closed and then they're like we got the biggest bridge in all of Miami. <laughs> we closed it down. We raised it 10 meters. We're going to do a big jump. I don't know how cars work or aerodynamics. I'm not. I don't know how bridges work. I've got no idea. I don't know how we don't drown. Yeah, constantly. I'm like, there's a body of water. How the hell am I going to go across? Why that? am I on the other side now? <laughs> how did this happen? Was there a frame? Why does a bridge need to go up when it's saving me from going down? I'll oh, never understand. Never understand. Um, yeah. So some of the people like get pretty hurt with the bridge. Oh yeah, and this isn't I'll... this isn't good for anyone. No, it's kind of crazy to me because in the first one, I like gave it props for them shutting down a street in LA, mm. and getting all these extras, and showing us how they would actually do a street race in yeah. terms of closing off roads. This one's just like nobody uses Miami, it's and you're a... like, mm-hmm. what do you mean? It's seven p.m. The this coke peak hour. Everyone's <laughs> coked up. Come on, no, the coke <laughs> trade stopped at Disney. The early two thousand. Everyone's just trying to get to Disneyland, <laughs> which I found out wasn't in Miami. It's in Florida. Isn't that same? Isn't that the same? Miami, Florida, but uh, I don't know where uh, Dis- <sighs> Leave this. No, I think we should both, because I agree with you. I just assumed it was near Yeah, it's there. not in Miami. Was it Orlando? Yes, that's it. It's okay. in Orlando. And, but I thought Miami I, and Orlando were next to I knew each that, other. So I was pretty clever. The, I knew where Disney's going to I'm going to edit you out. <laughs> You're going to swap your words. Oh, it's in, it's in Orlando. Don't you fucking dare. Oh, it's in Orlando. Fuck. Oh. In fairness, if you're editing this amount of effort, like I knew where Disneyland was, it's a bit, you know, you've lost. So as I said, they're in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Which is famously not next to Miami, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Paul Walker wins the race. He's very impressed. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. I do love um, that one chick stacks her car. Yeah. She's surprised when she looks at the front of it. She's like, damn, I thought I won this race and I thought the car wasn't broken. I thought I cleared that bridge except when all the sparks came up. <laughs> um, do these guys come back? They come back for the movie. Are they back in the film series at all? Oh, no. <laughs> they just want Eva. <laughs> They're all here yeah. for Miss Mendez and nothing else. Oh, of course. Now... Oh, and Tyrese and Ludacris. I guess they were just like, we'll scoop some of the cast. <laughs> yeah. Whatever my hand kind of brushes... Ah, oh, I've got them. All right. It was just a game of tag. Vin Diesel was just like, I've got a blindfold on, and whoever I touch continues. <laughs> you. Ludacris was like, ah, oh, man, this uh. is going to be a dead series. He's like, what if we made five trillion dollars? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be a billionaire because of a series. What if all you wanted to do was hack <laughs> computers and fuck women? Or sometimes hack women and fuck computers. Yeah. And Ludacris was like, that shit hot. <laughs> <laughs> now... Pop the cops come. I, again, it's like a... Where a, do they come from? Cop. <laughs> this the bridge is was going, close. <laughs> They're stuck on the other side. God damn you street... <laughs> with their fists in the... Damn you street racers. <laughs> you're too fast and you're too furious. Put that as the title. Now, I don't... You know how, like, in a film, like, you might set up, like, insane things? <laughs> the film's like, right, we've got an insane plot point, like, moving on at the end. I guess we should probably establish it. The cops uh-huh. have got this weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Regular cops. Just <laughs> just doing, just driving around Miami, making sure it's okay. Yeah. Given electric guns. They're like giving a, 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 essentially like a taser trident <laughs> that can shoot into cars and shut them down. I was like, oh... This series jumps the gun quicker than I remember it doing. <laughs> we're 15 minutes into the second one, and they were like, electricity gun tridents that take over cars? And you're like, 
All right, yeah. All yeah, right, well, I saw that bridge clear. I'm kind, it kind of eased me into it. I mean, if we didn't get Vin back, we might as well just say fuck it, right? Because that's the attitude you've given me. What do you mean Vin's coming back in two? We've already jumped nine sharks <laughs> over the bridge. What do you mean we're never going to use this technology again in 11 films <laughs> when it could be useful multiple times? <laughs> All they do is drive cars. Dare I say, it's the only piece of information, the technology we need. Uh, anyway, it's funny. So when they pull over... um. So when they pull over, uh, what's Paul his name, Paul Walker, there's about a hundred men with guns on him. It looks like the John Wick poster. Yeah. And I'm like, he was street racing. <laughs> Put your shotguns <laughs> down. What do you think he's going to do? Anyway, so he's arrested now. Yeah. Or so we think. So we think. No, he is. And then, <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, wasn't he a cop? I thought they had like, essentially like written off their own rules. And they kind of have and kind of haven't. Yeah. They bring him into the stage and go, all right, what you did was illegal, but you used to be a cop. And then you got discharged, which normally means you can't be a cop again. Normally but means you're disgraced. <laughs> hugely <laughs> disgraced <laughs> I know I've been discharged from many jobs it's a fun way of saying fired <laughs> <laughs> but essentially like he got fired because he was a bad he got too close to his like people he was trying to get undercover with he it was his first job and he befriended the criminal and fucked his sister <laughs> it was such and a let him go <laughs> let him the go it's the worst cop ever <laughs> And they were like, all right, Paul, we know you made a mistake and we've got, we've essentially got leverage over you. Do you want to have another go at it? And if you do the exact same thing again, I swear to God, we'll have no thing, nothing to punish uh, you with. They throw him just pages of things that he's done wrong. Yeah. They're just like, here's everything you've ever been charged with. And I'm like, what have you just completely turned to criminal life in the last like year? They're like, he's like, it's a lot of public urination. <laughs> A huge amount of it, Paul. What have you done? Dare I say we caught you a year ago. There's been 98 accounts. Have you been pissing daily? <laughs> Get a bar for... We'll buy you a house. Fuck it. You can stay at the We'll shout house. you the diapers. <laughs> Anything. Just a sponge will do. But just stop Paul, doing stop it. Paul, stop pissing in the corner right now. That's the 99th offense. It's another offense. <laughs> That's it. You're going to have to go find Tyrese Gibson. That's what you have to do. Great segue. The Gibbs is here. I'm going to tell you right now. Tyrese Gibson saves this film. <laughs> he is the only person in this movie with energy, caring. Um, and I would dare say he's, him and Paul Walker definitely have better chemistry than him and Vin Diesel do. I think so. Like, as a, this is, to me, a total, like, Bad Boys was a hit. Yeah. So we're moving it to Miami. We're making the series colourful, and we're having just, like, a bit of banter between the two, like, like two bros. Yeah. That's what I feel like this film is like basing itself on i feel 100%. like i can feel like a michael bay influence oh yeah definitely and i think that and that this is a fun part of the film i'm happy with this i think vin gave again why i like the first i think more than the second is that vin gave this sort of energy that is <laughs> i've never seen in a film and for there is kind of a novelty this is this is fun and probably better but mm. like it's it's not it's i've seen it before but but I'm happy. It's definitely better. There's no denying that. Like I'll say between the first like 25 minutes of this movie and the last like 22 minutes of this movie, the they're great. I love the beginning and the end. Yeah. It's this middle. Fuck. It's this this middle of the film. Yeah. Anyway, we meet Tyrese. He's not a big fan of Paul Walker. They have yeah. a really funny little fight. They do. Like, the chief that's, like, blackmailing Paul Walker, they're in, like, a big... He's at, like, a car smashy uh, competition, and he's like, let's go let's go wrestle in the dirt. Let's just go fucking, like, toe-to-toe. I just, to toe. I just think the Paul Walker was like, you're still a shit fighter. Yeah. Just, like, wrestling him in the ground. <laughs> I also like it because um, Tyrese Gibson has... An ankle uh, bracelet has an ankle ankle bracelet um that goes off because he's un still under arrest maybe. Yeah. This is just a caravan. What's the where would it go off? What do you mean? So he was he was in his car yeah. and then he was just walking to the caravan he lived in. Oh so yeah, the a, ankle monitor. What's the or, ankle monitor tied to? Also, I, I'm gonna say no way if you're under house arrest can you literally get a caravan and drive that defeats the per no way anyone's like i've got a i've got a water boat house how about that the chief of police was like we've never considered if the house could move <laughs> wheels fuck. fuck when did they come up with that bc <laughs> 
The first thing? That was the first thing we came up with? Oh, God. I thought you said Jesus invented chairs. <laughs> he was a carpenter. He just loved the wheels. He was inspired by he the wheels. He invented wheel. the first wheelchair. <laughs> That's what you're forgetting. That's why we say thank Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Brian's getting given like the lowdown of what his mission will have to be. Yeah. And they're like, here's your partner. And Paul Walker's like, I do not like this guy. No. He's got a comedically large cup from a pizza place. What is with this film making bold choices with food things? Just like this, the last movie and it's cappuccinos and sandwiches. And this one with its comedically large cups. It kind of plays into it. But again, I feel like we've gone into this. Like There must be a very big catering mistake. It's just weird it's now happened again. It's, a, a it's, it's the fourth time in this series, and we're technically only about two hours into both things. Like, that's a rate of 30 minutes per I thing. Know. A food based mishap. I love it because the guy in charge snatches the cup away and is like, You've embarrassed me. <laughs> well, because Paul Walker's like, What's Giovanni's Pizzeria times 20? And the guy's like, I don't know, an engine. And, then, <laughs> and Paul Walker's like, No, try it, it's your cup. And the police chief is like, You moron, you fucking idiot. Oh. Uh, Paul Walker's just like, hey, do you know what a car is? And the guy's like, I don't know, it's kind of like a wall, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I need Tyrese. <laughs> I need the Gibbs. Why do you call them the Gibbs? Because I feel like you've thrown up the Gibbs quite a bit. Where oh, it's the t- Gibbs. It's Tyrese <laughs> Gibson. It's, what do you mean? My mistake. He's famously think- the Gibbs. I love a last name that can be shortened into a the something. You've got many, you've got the Pivs, the Gives, and the Tiz. <laughs> People that don't know at home. Put them in a film. Put them in a film. Jeremy Piven, Tyrese Gibson, and a- it was it? Ashley Tisdale. Ashley Tisdale. Now that, that's a threesome. Oh my God. That's a hit. That's Ocean's 3 right there. That's all you need to make a film. I'd watch them pull off a heist. Oh. Okay. So they're pretty much like, all right, The Gibbs and uh, Paul Walker are like, all right, we're teaming up. What's the mark? They're like, right, he's an evil man. I don't know whatever motivation he has. I don't even know what he's done wrong. He doesn't doesn't, like sell drugs. He's just kind of like a kingpin. But we don't just homes rats. Yeah. As far as I know. Again, to the rats. But anyway, this guy pretty much like, you know, he's just bad. I don't think there's any motivation. I don't know what he does. He doesn't really have anything. He doesn't even really do a crime. No, really. the police are flat up just like, I don't love this guy. He's got a bad vibe about him. He's kind of ruining Miami. Yeah. Apparently the other day he raised a bridge without permission. Paul was like, interesting. What a monster. I will kill him for you. I heard he also pissed on that bridge. Yeah. <laughs> a hundred of offense. A hundred of offense. <laughs> Not me. The villain. Him. 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 And he also pissed any time you think that it was me. I'm just going to push it all on him. Yeah. He also let Vin go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him throw the keys to him. So basically, they have to go in undercover and win the villain's trust. Yes. And the villain's like, here's like 10 of you. Mm. Complete a mission. Yeah. This mission is to just like drive to a junkyard, get like a, a oh, cigar, and yeah. drive it back. Right? Again, this, this series, maybe it's just because of the cars, and maybe it's like set in America. All I can think is is this feels like a GTA shitty remake. Like, they've Mm. made the video game and they've gone, right, a terrible director like McGee is like, I'm going to make 10 (laughs) Grand Theft Auto movies and pretty much just put that in. Because it feels like a heist mission. Like, go to the junkyard, steal a car, something bad goes happen. Oh, it's absolutely a side mission. You've accidentally gotten three stars. Oh, no. Oh, no. Lose the cops. (laughs) Anyway, I do love there is a scene where a car gets trapped under a truck. Yeah. It looks awesome. It does. I'm not sure how they filmed it. No. I thought it was that cool. Yeah. Um, I also think it kills that guy. Oh, yeah. There's like death. There's, there's death. death in this one. Yeah. Whereas I feel like they were very conveniently not killing people in the last no, one. No, they were cheeky. They were like, oh, no. I no just it. Jesse. Just Jesse's dead. Yeah, because pretty much like the guy's like, they push him. It goes under the car. That guy goes rolling under. It's mm. brutal. I, I mean, know. he puts his arms up in fright. So I can I can only assume that would have created some sort of cushioning. Oh yeah, the hands on his face. He's like, all right, I made it out alive. Yeah, the car's flat. Though. It'd be funny if you just saw him like parachuting to safety. <laughs> You're just like, how do you do that? He nailed it. Huh? <laughs> he was underneath a truck. How do you get into high? How do you get air? <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so they win the villain's trust. Yes, because Eva Mendez is also um. Because the cops pretty much go, we've also got someone in the inside, but they don't have that much power. 
Eva Mendes, one, is the undercover. Two, is his, like, his girl. Yeah. Immediately. Immediately, Paul Walker's like, I want to tap that. It's like his kryptonite. I don't know how he keeps getting these jobs. He goes going undercover. He has no qualifications. And constantly, the first girl he sees goes, I am going to fuck her if it ruins the mission. I don't care what it takes. I must have sex with her. And he always does, baby. Oh, he it's always just does. like, as, as the person in charge, you'd be like, right. That's why they laughed at me when I said I'd get him to be involved in this mission. <laughs> Could you imagine them pitching? I've got uh, Paul Walker and they just laugh. And he goes, you know what? If there's no women on the mission, he's going to nail it. He'll I'll put fine. my job on the line for that. <laughs> as long as there's no mission or just a very, very, very hot brother, then we'll be fine. <laughs> and when the Gibbs walks in, he's like, ah, the Gibbs? <laughs> Mr. Ty Reese? Yeah. Why does he keep doing this? I don't know. I mean, I get it. Good for him. Yeah. He can do it. He's also living on a houseboat at the moment. So pff, Paul Walker's pretty rad in this film. Okay. So before they... um, what's So basically they succeeded doing this thing. Yeah. They've run his... The one is trust. Yeah. They then decide to go to a mechanic. Yeah. The mechanic is ludicrous. Yeah. It's also a water park. <laughs> That's the thing. Ludicrous is like, I set up a garage and next to it is essentially a bunch of jet skis and people partying. How does this man make money? How does this man become a hacker? <laughs> Why is he the best businessman in the world? Oh, he's so savvy. I've heard this guy's bought Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a good business deal. That's we a great know. business deal. Yeah. He wasn't tricked into it. He just did it. Yeah. He was like, more jet skis. It's his afro. He got so many ideas up there. That's where his head's it's gone. all head. Very little <laughs> hair. People don't realize. Why that. they call him ludicrous. Like, like, that's fucking ludicrous, man. Your head's strange. <laughs> We've bolded you and your head's massive. <laughs> that's ludicrous. <laughs> it's like, that's the name. Don't fucking wear it out. Tapped his little name badge. <laughs> I think this is a hilarious scene because they look at a woman and they go, what are you drawing? And she flips around the worst drawing of a car I've ever seen. <laughs> She's pretty much holding like three crayons Like I fucking nailed it And Paul Walker's like if I wasn't on a mission I'm (laughs) trying not to fuck women I I am going to but if I didn't have Eva Mendes In my mind You'd be on. you I'd, I'd, ruin I'd be every, with you right now I've ruined every mission I've ever been on To be with you I swear to god (laughs) It's just like Who drew I don't want to be mean I do not want to be mean I'll be mean Whoever the production designer was That diplomatically asked an art deco person or whatever to do the drawing and give it to that actress and tell her to flip it over and act like she's proud of it is mean. Do you think Vin drew the drawing? It was left over from last film. That or it was the first day of shooting for this scene and they did the drawing and then he heard some like quiet laughter. He's like... They draw that, and he stormed off. He's like, "You can get the Gibbs. I don't give a shit. See if the Gibbs can replace me." And he almost did. <laughs> Vin was halfway through it, and he heard the giggles, and he's like, "Fine, film the movie without a storyboard, then." <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of cars racing. Yeah. Make that into a tale. <laughs> Go on, try and direct this without any sort of idea. Speaking of directing, you know who directed this? John Singleton. Yeah, Boys in the Hood. Crazy. Die. No, he didn't do a Die Hard. Did he? Did he do that hard too? I don't know. It's, got, it's got, you know, it does feel a lot like um, uh, Die Hard 3 with Samuel Jackson and like uh, Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis. Cause it's sort of like, ah, we're not going to do that tower shit. We're just going to have fun. We're having a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yes, have a vibe. Have a vibe. Great film. Um, I got to tell you, I'm not sure what happens in this film. No, now. there's a lot of, there's a lot of silly bits. I'll be honest. Most of the film is uh, the villain's goons coming after them and then oh, foiling yeah. them constantly. Easily foiled goons. So essentially, the, it really threw me, because I think, is there either two sets of two goons or is there one set of two goons? No, there's four sets of one goon. Ah, gotcha. And those goons... Multiply into eight goons. And yeah. then grouped by four. It's one of those things where it's just it's a lot of goons. Yeah, a lot of goons. So the first set of, pitch. The first set of goons... Essentially, Paul Walker and the Gibbs are like, okay. Wait, are we... they not the same? They goons? might be. I think they are. I think they are. Are they twins? 
<laughs> Could you imagine there's two sets of goon twins? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't it be fun if this villain's thing was he was like, I just like to work with twins. <laughs> yeah, they've got a weird vibe about them. That'd be more fun. That you would know be what Br- uh, Brad Pitt's thing was like, I just want to eat a lot during the Oceans movies? Yeah. If this guy was like, no, I just want to work with twins. Uh, that work? There's a super cut of like a bunch, I don't know, It was I think it was a tweet or something. Some one was just like, you know, a good director knows that twins are a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> And it was like a picture of like the guys from Uncut Gems, like those two guys oh, that keep yeah. following Adam Sandler around, yeah. and like the Matrix and stuff like that. Oh, Just yeah. like yeah, they nail it. I quite like the twins in Batman. Which the one? New, the new Batman. Yes, that was one of the That's clips. That's a good yeah. gag. They're the guys from Desperate Housewives, and I love them in that. I know one of them's in the Office as well. Wow. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? What a career for him. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so the goons essentially, Paul Walker and the Gribs are like, okay. We need to get some cars because our cars are hot. The villain has bugged our cars. And then they take it to uh, Ludacris. He's like, damn, we can't get the bug out of this. It's wired in. So they're like, all right, I know what we should do. We should go to the villain's goons <laughs> and and do a drag race with them. Yeah. One of those things where it's like you win the car. It's crazy. Sorry. I mean, what a win for modern. I used to be drag race. Used to be a car race. Now the days it's a popular TV show. Huge. Huge win for Huge equality. for the queer yeah. community. Good, Good for, for them. them. Good RuPaul's for them. nailed it. Yeah. But the car community is falling. Oh my God. I would say to me, the RuPaul drag race is more iconic than a regular drag race. I think so. I get confused whenever I'm invited to either. Yeah. So I just come prepared for both. <laughs> You dressed up in all your heels in like the most souped up Subaru, just oh. like oh god, it wasn't Eva. <laughs> oh, christening, oh god, I look ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, they do the drag uh, race. Yeah, Paul Walker's in makeup. He's in. He's looking great. Oh my god, he looks stunning. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, he's Shantang. He's staying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these these goons though. They're sashaying away. Oh, they're sashaying away. <laughs> Essentially, the Gibbs fucks up the race. They don't have a fast enough car. Then Paul Walker's like, I know, I'll cheat. And then he's pretty much like, <laughs> so the guy's driving back from him. He's like, I'm going to crash into you and kill you if you don't fucking move. The guy's like, oh, fuck, I'm going to die. I I'll move. He just runs into another advertisement sign. <laughs> it's always a cushioning. <laughs> it's always an advertisement when you run off the road. That's the thing about the products. They, you know, they pillow you. They're a safety blanket. I a nice, just... warm Pepsi. Mm. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. The shock that I got when I realized this drag race was a relay? <laughs> yeah. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. They were like, come, Paul was like, come on. I'm like, what are you waiting for? Then yeah. the Gibbs drives past. He's like, meow. Oh. I do love it. They win the race, but then the goons, for some reason, they, they haven't been in the scene, but their wives are like, hugging them and embracing them <laughs> as <laughs> books. <laughs> They look so sad. <laughs> Paul Walker and the Gibbs are laughing, driving off, and they could not look. So- the woman, like, oh, baby, did he win? Did he hit those cars of you? Damn. I've seen people look less solemn at a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they told these actors to do with that scene, but it was kind of crushing. It was. I was like, you know, that's really. Good. You cheated, and you should give back the cars. I was like, Paul, come on. <laughs> You're better than this. Get them the cars back. I, it's kind of funny because they have to get a bus back. Yeah. Uber wasn't a thing. No, you could Taxis get... don't go through there. Not into Miami. It's Not into scary. Miami. There's too much advertisement. <laughs> yeah. Cushions yeah. your fall. <laughs> oh, God. I've, got, I've landed another like BP commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's topical because of Deepwater Horizon. Oh, good. This is when we're recording this film as well. Let's record this episode. <laughs> it's the year 2011. And there's oil everywhere. <laughs> God, they've spilt it everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. BP really fucked up on that one. Yeah. Am I right? It's topical. Am I right? Now, again, I'm I'm a bit Let's, lost. Can we go to the nightclub scene? We Let's can. just jump around. We'll go to the nightclub scene. Yeah, they go to the Oasis. <laughs> Shut up. Is that what it's called? <laughs> That's what they call What'd it. you just call it? The Oasis. <laughs> it's actually That's called what... the Oasis. Yeah. This movie's a hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's gold. It's gold. Oh, anyway, they go to 
It's that name is such a cherry on top to what is the worst nightclub I've ever seen on film. It's if bright. You heard the word oasis, you could not picture the worst place. It is such a, a brightly lit place. It's a living room. <laughs> it is a living room of a house. That's the decor. That's the lighting. It's the attitude. People are swing dancing to the remix that's playing. The villains like come into my lair, and it's like Doctor Seuss sofas, so large in the back, and he's like, take a seat, and he's. It's like, God, it looks warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you can either drink the champagne. Um, I've got green eggs and ham or a fox in a box. <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> Careful, the Grinch is lurking. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see that fucking Lorax anywhere, tell him I'm coming for his trees. <laughs> Oh, anyway, the villain's like, you guys are doing good. I really start to trust you. By the way, I've got to deal with some shit. Do you mind if you guys just stick around for a bit? He's like, hey, dirty cop, come over here. Oh, I loved this because this guy plays a dirty cop in Batman Begins. Does he actually? Yeah. He does, He does. He? He's the one that's like, um, he just steals money from the falafel guy. Yeah. It's, a, it's just a funny little bit where he steals the money and the guy's like, hey, I've got kids to feed. And he's like, what, they don't like falafel? <laughs> And the guy's like, ah, you nailed me. It's true, they love it. Oh, they do. <laughs> um, anyway, I like to think Christopher Nolan seen this and <laughs> hired him off this. <laughs> um, that man can act. Anyway, the villain's like, come over here, you dirty cop. Hey, are you going to give my guys a bit of time because you're staking me out? He's like, no. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do he's that. Like, he's, not like, a, he's like, I'm not a dirty cop. I'm just a cop. I'm here yeah. to arrest you. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, give him the rap. Get him out of Oasis right now. <laughs> <laughs> he not, should not be here. He's like, Oasis? I'm meant to be at Oasis. <laughs> Shit. Today is going to be, be the day. day. Um, the villain's like, all right, get him on the table. And then Paul Walker, they're still in these massive orange couches. That oh are my so God, blood. it's like, hysterical. It's just a fun setup because it's like a shirtless man's on a lounge. Yeah. Tyrese, the the Gibbs and Paul, Paul Walker on comedically large couches. Yeah. Somebody's coming in with a giant bucket. It's, <laughs> you're like, where could this There's, possibly go? Not even where, is this, where could this go? Where did we come from? I'm confused where this scene, because it doesn't really come back. It hasn't like established... He has a connection. Anyway. It's, al- like, it's absolutely a writer going, the, this guy's done nothing wrong as no. a villain. I think this is, I would also just like to say at this point, mm. I am the middle of the movie, not enjoying it as much as the first Fast and Furious. No. This is, believe it or not, more cohesive and a normal film. I think so. Of just them being like, here's an objective here's the two characters and here's the villain (laughs) and you're like cool i get it here's how they're like getting into the uh, villain because i looked it up it's a proper screenwriter yeah he did like 310 to yuma he's done like a handful of other things he's also the creator of three giant shows yeah he created chicago fire chicago md and then that other chicago one yeah so this is probably this screenwriter is probably one of the richest people in Hollywood because I know how much these fuckers make from their like twenty four episode seasons of television. Literally. Chicago Fire's had like two hundred episodes. This Fuck man's off. making bank. Oh yeah. So they bring in this rat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they go. Okay. Get on the stomach. They put a bucket on his belly. They put a rat underneath, and then the villain's like, "I've got to start being a villain. I don't know what I do anyway." Give me the blowtorch at a club. At the Oasis, they have many. The guy, the villain gets it's all the blow- lighting. Yeah. All of its blowtorch it's lighting. Blow-torch. That's why it's so bright. And so expensive. <laughs> Fun fact, this whole Oasis is built on NOS. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is in this? A blowtorch. NOS. Anyway, he puts the blowtorch to the bucket. And then the rat's applied. That's like, all right, it wants to get out. So it's going to dig through your stomach. Mm. I think this is a great fun concept idea yeah i'm just it's just come out of nowhere it's odd because i think you could just blowtorch the guy yeah save yourself some money on the rat in the bucket you know and that's where the real money comes through it's true i like the, I, I would love the subplot of them catching the rat it's like there's the bucket and like a stick and a string you know <laughs> somebody's just holding waiting honestly 40 <laughs> minutes of those goons trying to get this little rat I'd watch it. Oh, absolutely. Just like if it deviated and it was almost like a movie version of Mouse Trap. Oh, that's good. That's Wouldn't that good. be great? Yeah. Yeah. 
And they're just like, oh, we caught it in the little cage. Now we go back to the film. Now we go back to Oasis. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if, this, if Two Fast, Two Furious had an interlude? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you? How, how much whiplash would you get with, like, intermission? <laughs> and then we just follow a little vignette of how they got the rat. I'd be like, this movie's making some choices. This movie's making a lot of choices. So far, it hasn't made too many choices. But no, it hasn't. We're, so we're, far, we're so getting far, a choice city soon. So far, the name Hoasis is the biggest choice this movie's made. <laughs> um... After this, we're like, cool, so they're going to pull off the heist. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Which I didn't realise was just taking money from, like, the back of a caravan. Yeah, I, again, it, it feels like Ocean's Eleven, but the plan was to just, just rob a convenience store. It's... It, with no, like, twist. <laughs> they were just like, <laughs> we're just going to go in there, rob them, and take the money. It's one of those things, though, where if you, I think, sat me down, mm. and you were like this isn't a good film. What were some aspects you enjoyed? Mm. And I was like, Tyrese, Ludacris, Paul Walker, and the last 30 minutes. Mm. And they were like, excellent. That'll be the franchise from now on. Yeah. That's what this is. The last 30 minutes of this is what the whole franchise turns into. Which is great. Cause they've got, they've just accidentally, cause they had like, well, I guess Vin Diesel was stealing DVDs at the start. Mm. And these guys have just like robbed like big villains of a lot of money. Maybe we can make that a billion dollar franchise. Yeah, what if they pulled off heists and you're like, love it. Because what is their actual plan? Essentially... (laughs) What a question. (laughs) (laughs) Me as a viewer? I don't know. I checked out. No clue. I don't think they... It's fine. I just complimented... I'm freaking out because I was like, oh, we've still got 40 minutes of the movie to go and then these are my notes for the last... (laughs) I've got two lines. I thought... I must have absorbed a lot of the film. (laughs) We We could sort of go through it. Um, let's talk about what the villain's plan is. So his plan is essentially, okay, this dirty cop is now going to give me a 15 minute window, uh, for me to go to my safe house to steal the money that I'm stashing stuff in. Right. That's his plan. Yeah. Except the cop immediately goes, I'm not going to listen to you, (laughs) even though you did that rat thing. Like, he's like, if you don't fucking do this, I'm going to kill your mother, your sister, your kids. And then the cop, it's the most startling thing, because he looks at his kids and wife and goes, oh, you know what? I don't give a shit. My job's way more important than my family. I love the idea of him looking at them and being like, I don't know those people. (laughs) That's a stock footage. (laughs) a stock photo. I'm an orphan. I'm an orphan. Nobody loves me. No one loves me. I'm a dirty cop. I'm a dirty cop. Uh, uh, Hangs out at Oasis. Of course I'd have a partner. Yeah, Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. Get them in. So then, yeah. What's going on? Because there's so many police. So many police. So many police. I've never seen so many police in a film. There's a helicopter too. Yeah. And I would like to say that there is a star in the making. The woman in that helicopter has some of the best line readings I've ever seen in a film. It's worth seeking out. She says things like, they've got nowhere to go. And what was that? <laughs> <laughs> she sells them. You She's can a feel star. them like in like a green screen studio in the helicopter, like, like, uh, co- uh, in the, what do you call that? The, the poop deck of a helicopter? <laughs> What's the the cockpit, cockpit? The cockpit. The I was so, deck of I the was cockpit. so clo- I was so close. Anyway, you can just feel them like, all right, be reactive. They're like, what to? We don't know yet. We're right in the heist as we go. <laughs> um, Damn, so, there so, they are. So she's like, ah, we'll follow them now. Yeah. And then they just go to an area. And I was like, is the movie wrapping up? Because mm. this doesn't feel like a climax. Yeah, because Paul Walker and the Gibbs have driven into a garage, right? Yeah, and I'm like, there hasn't been much action. There hasn't been a lot of spectacle. They spent a lot cars? of money on this. Yeah, it hasn't been much cars. It's just sort of been them stealing those cars from those sad goons. Mm. <laughs> this is a bit of a disappointment. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Have you, I love when a movie's like, do you want to see the fucking budget? <laughs> Do you want to see? Because we saved the budget. Yeah. Because <laughs> here it is, and it just splooge all over it. Oh, that's that. That is this film. Oh yeah, you love that. Because <laughs> I won't be hyperbolic. 
maybe a million cows. <laughs> <laughs> Leave this garage. So are the most ghastly vehicles of the worst color palette just spew out. And the cops, the cops essentially first get rammed by vehicles. Surely that's a crime. Oh, and God. then thousands of vehicles. But also Paul Walker and the Gibbs don't swap vehicles, which I don't get. Like they go, oh, the yellow and blue car, which is them. I don't know why they've gone to this no, elaborate. Swap them. No, no, they are still in their cars. Sorry. Oh, but they create another two. Because that's what yes, they follow yes, Ludacris. Yes, yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Sorry, the but the the comedy here. Yeah. Is that the garage is quite small? Oh yeah, it's like it's it's like a good size. Let's say like a hundred by like fifty meters. Yeah. Pretty big. It'd fit a You're few. You're not shitting. It is like at least five hundred cars. St- there's so many there's shots. So many cars. There's so many shots of cars coming out. I was in awe. Yeah. I was. When they get every car available on buy, swap, and sell. <laughs> not even this many cars existed. This is huge for cars in general. I was like, no wonder Pixar made a film called Cars. I was inspired. I went and hopped in my car. I was just on a high. This was some of the best things I've ever seen in film. Is just these cars coming out of a small car. This it was like a clown garage with a bunch of fucking cars in it. It was insane, and it doesn't stop us. The going. cops are like looking at it going. Oh, fuck, we've been bested. We've oh. we've lost. Back to Oasis we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, how do you even coordinate this? I don't so, know. So, so none that of them is, crash. That is, that is so true. Like just logistically, fucking... like it's they're just swerving everywhere. It's on, the director's gone. If you don't crash, you get a, a, an additional thousand dollars on your paycheck. Keep the car. Fuck it. That's what you get. <laughs> you know what? If we can't catch you, you keep the car. <laughs> that was the, that was the, <laughs> that was the motivation. Here's a bunch of extras. Drive the cars. Steal them. We didn't hire them. Descend on Miami. You've got to <laughs> <laughs> reap the rewards. Yeah. You've got everywhere to go. Except we didn't put that bridge down yet. We must get to that. Just don't go over that bridge. Um, anyway. The cops are in ruins. They can't find them. It's hilarious for the cops for this to happen yeah. to them. Hilarious. Yeah. What would you even do on a day like that? The woman in the helicopter is probably just having a beer. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's like, just like, sit us down or crash us. <laughs> One or the other. This is just, this is enough. <laughs> After like the fourth minute of cars pouring at you oh. like, fuck off. Just fuck right off. Take the money. This is ridiculous. <laughs> they've earned. They've clearly preemptively spent Surely, it all on I, cars. Quite this frankly, is all they, of it. they have the money. I don't know why they're stealing a hundred grand. <laughs> this is foolish on us. Wouldn't it be fun if they just descended a bunch of helicopters into the sky too? And you're just like, where's this coming from? Just out of a cloud. <laughs> anyway, so the police do actually catch up to Paul and the Gibbs, but no, it's ludicrous. Oh. This what a is, twist. This is a weird one, because the police go, well, you guys aren't the villains, but you still are definitely under arrest. And they're like, nope, we've done no crimes. It's like, surely this is a crime. No, it's very much... The police also watch Ludacris as he's like, hey, did you get away? <laughs> he's on the phone! He's like, in the handcuffs, like, hey, Paul Walker, yeah, you get away? All right, meet you at the highway. We'll see you soon. It's him just being like, no, no, officer, I swear, I had no idea what was going on. It worked! <laughs> <laughs> They're idiots! Yeah, I'm chatting to them now! I'll put them on! Oh, I love this. They've then also set up the most intense ejector seat ever. <laughs> it probably killed... They show it doesn't kill a man, but Tyrese, the Gibbs, kills a man. Pretty much. He jumps into another, he jumps into another car, is that right? Yeah, and it, thro- and it throws them out yeah. with an ejector seat. Paul Walker almost does it to his guy. Yeah. And then the guy's like, don't worry, we're going to a new location. And Paul Walker's like, interesting. This... The, the, the goon in Paul Walker's car is like enamored by it. He's like, you're kind of the greatest man ever. <laughs> I think he was me. And it's the, us. He was like, That's the viewer. <laughs> gorgeous. Oh my God. Have I been trying to... F- okay, take me wherever you want. I don't care. Women. <laughs> to think I was interested in women for so long oh, when been, Paul was here the entire time. years at Oasis when I could have had Paul. Paul, what if we took the money for ourselves? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a twist? Who needs Eva? It's Vin in a mask. <laughs> <laughs> they retroactively are like, no, no, Vin was in this film. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they then get to a boat. Yeah. Turns out the villain's like, ah, I knew Eva was was CIA or whatever. Yeah. He takes the money. I I was sit- I was up right now. Yeah. I've been bored a lot of the movie. I'm up right yeah, now. Yeah, I've been getting right bored. At this, I, and, and people that I was watching what with were like, ugh. 
because they watched the first, loved it. This one, they're like two thirds in, they're like, that sucked. And when I had to tell them, I'm like, it turned around. They were furious, like, <laughs> fuck off. I watched the worst part of the movie, and I was like, they go on, Carl, what happens? I was sitting up on the edge of my chair because I calculated they're in a boat, mm. but they're in a car. <laughs> If this doesn't go the way I want it to, I will kill everything. <laughs> but this movie knows what it's doing. Tyree, the Gibbs, the Gibbs and Paul Walker share a look and they're like, we got to get this car on that boat. And I was like, fuck yes. This is what we're in for. This is what we want. This is a five star film. What do they do with the car, Oscar? Oh, they, they, they dukes have hazard it. They go, right, oh. the boat's over there. 50 meters, maybe. There's a small advertising Pepsi ramp. <laughs> and they're like, we're going to drive over that. And the cushioning bounce is going to make us fly. Oh, I don't know how they the get boat. so much air. So much air. The ramp it's is the goddamn tiny. NOS. It's oh, the it's NOS. it's all the NOS. It's all the goddamn NOS. It would have been NOS. funny if you accidentally ejected <laughs> Tyrese. <laughs> um, in the newer films, they would have. Because Tyrese in this film, we should really quickly say, is kind of a badass and is meant to be treated seriously. Mm. And I don't see him in the later ones where he's a buffoon. He is the comedic relief yeah. in the in the new ones. This was a moment where I was like, don't be CGI. Don't be oh. CGI. What was it, Oscar? Oh, it was not CGI. It was not a C- I think there was a... They've, they've edited it well enough that I was like, they fucking did it. They, 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 they definitely, it. at one point in the movie's uh, production... There was a, a car on a boat. There was a car smashed into the back of a boat. Yeah. And somehow nobody injured. <laughs> Eva's like, oh, thank God, you just missed me. <laughs> the villain's like, you also missed me. I'm also still here. Yeah. How do they stop the villain? Eva just like kicks him. Yeah. She's like, ah, I've got strong legs. Yeah. What's that thing that you just bought? Uh, a stepmaster? Yeah, she's like, I've been working on the stepmaster all movie. Great, you nailed that joke. You fucking nailed that. I'll cut out you. <laughs> <laughs> then the joke will work. Um, yeah, and then the movie sort of wraps up. Yeah. Well, the boys, in traditional fashion, they're like, the CIA is like, you scallywags, guys... Scallywags, I would like scall- you to call them. Oh, they're scallywag-esque. Yeah. Because the CIA is like, you guys nailed it. You're off the hook. Tyrese, no more jail time. Paul Walker, you don't have to do with us. And then immediately like, but we stole a hundred grand in our belts. <laughs> The scallywags we are. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it be crazy if uh, they were just arrested again? Yeah. Paul Walker immediately just pisses in public. <laughs> a hundred times! <laughs> a hundred fucking times! Surely you have to, like, be killed. That's, that's, the, that's the law. Uh, Oscar, who would watch Too Fast, Too Furious? Okay. So at the moment, we've got the first one. I think beloved by many. I love it. I think it's got something love weird. Love it. Cho- I think it has... No. Love I, it. I don't love it for the same reason everyone does. I think it's got those weird choices. It's so 2000s. Such a time capsule. Is that why it's loved, though? No, no, no. I who don't knows th- what's going on? I don't know. I don't know what... I don't know who was like... Paul Walker and Vin Diesel's relationship is good. That's a strange <laughs> two men. But it's they, also it's also weird to me because they don't meet again until the fourth one, yeah. and then they just have the fourth, fifth, and sixth film together. Yeah. So, I'm interested to see them actually build that out. Yeah, me Cause, too. Because at the moment, I'm I'm all in on the Gibbs and and the Walks. Yeah, so far they're the best relationship. This one is definitely more competent, uh, but it as is. a result, quite bland. I think the the middle definitely drags a little bit. I think if the movie had kept its pace from the beginning. Yeah. And had more of what it was doing at the end, mm. that would have been okay. Yeah. I think the this movie maybe should have only been eighty minutes. Yeah, I was surprised the runtime because I mean it's I like feel 145? like one forty five. I feel, yeah, I feel like yeah. we cut out another. There's another bit where the goons do another thing. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? It's who, just, honestly, just I think it just sets up that there's water around. Yeah. I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, who would watch this? I mean. It's funny because like I feel like people watch the first one. I, I I'm trying to understand because this is like the least loved one, isn't it? I think I think this and then the one that just came out are the two lowest. Gotcha. So yeah, sorry. Continue with what you're saying. Oh, I was just trying to think like who the first one really was the audience for. Yeah, well, this isn't for I think fans of the first. No, because they do a pivot. They're like, all right, we're, we're cutting the half of it. I think Paul, it is crazy. Paul Walker is the main character mm. in the series. I feel like Vin very much was like embodied this but it's it's paul walker's like baby essentially. yeah right now 
if this is this movie's out, this is a Paul Walker franchise, yeah, not a Vin Diesel no. franchise, which is an interesting concept it considering is. the third one decides to have neither of them in it, yeah, but be set in Tokyo. Oh, I'm keen. Um, yeah. So who do you think it's for? I am confused. I mean, like, I feel like, yeah. I mean, it's a bit of like a bad boy. It's like I think you kind of nailed it. It's like one of those sort of types, mm. just sort of like. <sighs> I don't really know because it's not really I mean like I don't think it's very car heavy there's cars in it mm. but like I don't think it's got like the drag racing sort of like love for it it's kind of just a shit heist movie it is but and also it's like a weird footnote in like a billion dollar franchise yeah I think it I think it is for Michael Bay fans mm. this reminded me of a Michael Bay movie where yeah. like the beginning's sort of like oh this is alright then it gets boring and then the third act's like loud yeah that's what this sort of... So it's, I don't think it's for p- fans of the first, mm. which I think is an interesting concept Yeah, for you to alienate fans. Whereas it's, all, it's also funny too, because I think you could make this movie without the things that make it silly, and it probably would be in tone with the first film in terms of its... Um, like, like minus the boat jump and like like uh, if they just took out anything that was like man that was ridiculous mm. the the idea of Brian teaming up with an old friend he betrayed yeah to just infiltrate another criminal it's very it works yeah, yeah it works so I can understand how this was like had the shell of a Fast and Furious film but somebody in amongst that just went why isn't this fun yeah why isn't this good where's the joy mm. this is for the most part a near sort of joyless film yeah having said that there's there are bits shining through like gold nuggets i think this has a lot of good in, like, like everything it's if you take everything that the first movie did well mm. and combined it with everything this movie did well that's a film yeah in my opinion this is the one that has like bits of charisma and it has a bit more of i understand the plot some, stronger is yeah stronger plot definitely. yeah it's just like things are making a bit more sense and then it's like the first one sort of has a bit more of like the fun grunge 2000s feel to mm. it and has a bit more of like the the that type like the the point break-esque aspect of it as well like it's just like these two things could merge and surely that's what the fourth and fifth i think that's what they do i think they literally have a look at the first three and they go what well, worked in all three of them and then they just make the fourth one and that's where the franchise really starts that's so much fun isn't yeah. it yeah yeah so who do you think it's for? Who have you said it's for? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I feel like if you if you if you love the Gibbs, <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it showcases the Gibbs. It though, does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's for the Gibbs. Yeah. All right, get big Gibbs fans here. Yeah, big Gibbs fans. God, I rewatched the Social Network. What a blast! It's great. Yeah, yeah. And it holds up. Proposed, and then watch the Social Network. Wow, yeah. that's that's somebody that loves their. Fiance. Love a bit of, love a bit of, uh, Is like, it fiance both ways? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. God, what did you watch? I watched Barbarian. Oh, is it good? It was good. I mm. quite liked it. I think you should seek it out. I think mm. it's a good one for horror fans. Mm. It's like really well constructed in terms of how the movie wants to Oh no, the way that the movie is structured is very creative. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, it has a pretty good villain. Pretty good monster creations. Pretty good. It has really good acting. Mm-hmm. It's very confidently directed and edited. Um, and it also has like a good amount of humor and goofiness to it. So it's not one of those horror movies that's like, we're taking ourselves seriously to the point that you're kind of bored. Yeah. So, yeah, I would I would recommend Barbarian. I think it is a lot of fun. I watched it in a cinema too, and I'm just like, man, horror movies have... them. Those movies live and die with their sound design. Yeah. This movie's sound is awesome. I will say that I think the first half is stronger than the second half. I think it loses its tension in the, for the sake of doing some fun comedy stuff, which mm. I still vibed, very Sam Raimi, but that first half is like a great, great piece of tension. Amazing. Oscar, what are we reviewing next oh, week? A classic. A classic Christmas. We're in the Christmas mood, Carl. Oh, uh, we are. We're, we're starting... Some people put up their tree the 1st of November. We're putting up our little Christmas podcast midway. Wait, 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 wait. This is the thing. I feel like... Uh, like two years in a row we've only done like three christmas movies mm. there's so many so much gold so there. many awful ones yeah. out there and ones a lot of people watch every year every year i think it's such a fun one because essentially everyone go we're gonna watch one of the fucking worst movies ever but because it's got christmas in it we're gonna it's gonna live and make money for 90 we years. watch it yearly 
Yearly. Some people don't watch their favorite movies yearly. No, I don't. Yeah. Did you say what the movie was? No, Jingle All the Way. <laughs> <laughs> Jingle All the Way. That's what Schwarzenegger classic. You've even got, uh, I think his name's Jake Lloyd. Jake oh, from, from Star Wars? Yeah, from Star Wars. Wow. Pre-Star Wars, I think. Yes. So, huh. Bit Check of, it out. It's a bit of fun to be had there. We're going to watch it. Get We're the Christmas watch mood. Yeah. Listening. Who doesn't love Larry? No, not Larry the Cable Guy. Is Larry the Cable Guy another one? Uh, I think it is. Mater? Yeah. Who doesn't love Larry the Cable Guy? Okay, Larry the Cable uh, Guy. Until then. Thanks for listening.